All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation, and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. Today, we are lucky enough to be joined by Dr. Adam Fraser. Dr. Adam Fraser is a peak performance researcher who helps people strive to achieve better performance in everything they do. In his time, he's worked with elite athletes and sporting teams, special forces soldiers and business leaders. He's the author of a book called The Third Space and the author of a book he's released recently called Strive. Dr. Adam Fraser, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Looking forward to having a chat. Oh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, I read your book, The Third Space, um, last year, and it changed, in a way, it changed my life. It changed a lot of what I do and the way I think about things. And the reason I've invited you to be here today is just because, you know, we this podcast is designed to help families and to help couples. Yeah. And I know for a fact that just this discussion today will get people thinking, hopefully people will go out and read this book and it will have a similar impact on their lives. Um, so I guess for those that don't know who you are, um, if you can please just give us a, a, a bit of a breakdown. I'm sure a few people have heard of you before, but I've seen you on TV a few times. Um, whenever there's any decent event that I'm invited to, you, you seem to be there. But if you can please just <laughs> tell us a bit about yourself. Um, yeah, well, I mean, my undergraduate was in biomedical science, which is a blend of psychology and physiology. And then I uh, went and worked with um, elite athletes, which um, I didn't actually enjoy nearly as much as I thought. Uh, then I got a scholarship to do a PhD. So I did a PhD in that area of well-being and performance and how the two affect each other. And then I just started being asked by businesses to come in and present on my research and what I was doing and I just fell in love with it. So currently we have a a business that has three main focuses. Number one is presenting. So I I do a lot of keynotes. Um, The second one is we do a lot of research uh, actually, we just won a global award uh, from the Academy of Management for Best nice. Paper for 2020. Yeah, it was awesome. Nice. Uh, it, was a, it was a great surprise and a great honor. And um, the third area is we run large programs. So currently we're working with school principals around mental health and well-being, but also effectiveness. Uh, it's called the Flourish Movement. We're also uh, working with partners in professional services firms to look at how do we prevent burnout? And about a month ago, we just kicked off Australia's first study into the mental health and well-being of financial advisors. So yeah. um, they're kind of the things that we do. Yeah, nice, nice. And and and, and as far as the, I guess the, the third space is concerned. Yep. Um, I'm not going to explain it because I'll you'll, I'll do a terrible job of it. But if you could sort of sort of give give our listeners a bit of an idea as to, I guess the concept behind it and how it came about because um, it's an interesting, in a way you stumbled across it. Yeah. Look, it's probably the most popular piece of research we've ever done and it's the thing that more people email me or call me and go, hey, that thing really had an impact on my life. And how it came about is, um, well, it was kind of a slow burn. One of the things I noticed about top performers, whether they were athletes or soldiers or business people, was this amazing ability to transition between the different parts of their day. So, you know, a great athlete transitioning between points and their ability to, if they had disappointment, to leave that behind but get their head right for the next point or a great leader being able to have a frustrating meeting and then not carry that into the next meeting or a great salesperson being able to be rejected and then front up to the next opportunity and give it their all. Yep. So this is something we, we saw. And then I, um, I had an interaction where I had a dinner with a CEO in his home with his family. And the thing about him was that he was just amazingly present and patient and fun and funny. And the whole meal, I'm just going, my gosh, that, that's how I want to be when I'm at home. And I quizzed him about it. And what he talked about is he had this process in that he would come home and, 
I know it sounds ridiculous, but he actually built a new entrance into his home. So he'd drive into the garage. He he built this new door that went from the garage to his room and he would go in there and not talk to anyone and he'd have a shower and do some relaxation and then he'd go out and greet the family. And what he talked about is that previously he had come home from work and one day he noticed as he went to open the door, he saw the kids like run away, you know, literally, oh, my God, dad's home, and they bolted out the back. And and he said, I realized I came home like this hurricane and I just mm-hmm. left a trail of destruction through the house. And what we found in our research is too often we take the mood or mindset of the previous space into the next space. So we might take, you know, a bad meeting into the next meeting or we have a bad day at work and we take it home with us. It's something we call negative spill, where the stress of one environment moves into the next. And what we started to explore was, well, how do we effectively transition, whether it's from work to home or one meeting to another? And and we call this transitional gap, the third space. So like the first space is what we're doing now, second space, what we're about to do. What we start to explore is how do you use that gap, which may be five seconds or maybe 30 minutes to really reset yourself and, and, and show up as the best version of yourself for what you're doing next. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. Cause because I've been self-employed since, I don't know, probably since I was 15. And um, I've always literally, it's been, it's been hard for me to transition sometimes between, you know, work mode and non-work mode. Um, mm. And again, it's, I think a lot of people can relate to that, whether they're self-employed or not. But um, as, I guess, as a father and as someone in a relationship, I guess it is very easy for that negative spill to occur, isn't it? Because my wife, she used to work in social work. Oh, wow. Um, before we got married. And she used to tell me about something called, what did she call it? She used to call it the circle of, I think she used to call it the circle of violence or, or the circle of something. And I guess it, it sort of does happen. Like you have a bad day at work or something happens and you sort of take it out on your partner, for example, and then yeah. they take it out on each other and then suddenly you're taking it out on the kids. And then it just, you go to bed angry and you wake up angry and you don't know why you're angry. And, and then you yeah. carry that to work the next day and it, it, it compounds on itself. Yeah, yes, so, yes. I mean, what the third space is about is like that circuit breaker, that ability to stop that compounding of negativity or stress. Yeah, and so I think it's also, would you agree it's also being aware of what's happening around you? Because sometimes mass get angry without even realizing what's happening. Massively. I think you hit the nail on the head there is that um, Duke University showed that 45% of our day we're spent in autopilot, like literally – we, we're not conscious about how we're showing up or impacting or even how we feel. Wow. And, and what the third space is really about is like that self-awareness of what's going on for me right now, like where am I at, how busy is my mind, but also taking the time to think about, well, what am I trying to achieve in this next interaction, whether it's yes. a sales meeting, whether it's I'm meeting with one of my direct reports and I'm trying to understand how they're traveling or give them some really positive feedback. So what the third space does is increases self-awareness, but also gets people to think about constructive behaviors that they want to do. And that's why this we've, we've seen amazing results with this strategy because it does those things. Yes. And I don't want to give too much away because I really do want people to, to, to read this stuff, but on one in your book on page 138, you've got this um, diagram where you explain going between the first and second space, how there's the reflect, rest and reset. If you can briefly just explain that concept as well, because most of the time people going from a first to a second space, yeah, they're definitely not going from one happy place to another. Yeah. Well, I mean, after I had this interaction, I would, with the CEO, I would share that story. Yeah. And it was just kind of an add on to my keynote and yeah, my keynotes were about innovation and performance and, People came up to me, they didn't, after the presentation, they didn't want to talk about innovation or performance. They want to talk about the third space. They just went, oh my gosh, I love that concept. And I kind of do it. Or some people would go, oh, I don't do it. And that's why I do come home angry. And it just really resonated with people. And then I spent three years uh, with Dr. John Molyneux from Deakin University and the pair of us studied, well, what, how do you transition most effectively? And we found that there was three parts to it. And, and this is any transition, whether it's a big one or a small one, is that 
The first part is called reflect. And that's your capacity to reflect on what you've just gone through, but in a constructive way. Because when we reflect on things, we tend to be very pessimistic. Like we have this negative bias where we go, oh, God, I could have done that better or I screwed that up. And what's more effective is if you look at that and go, all right, okay, what what did I do well then? Like how did I improve? What did I implement? And, and having this positive reflection just helps you grow and evolve. The second phase is called rest. And that's the ability to just calm your mind and focus it. Because too often our minds are so scattered and all over the place. And we're going into a meeting, but we're thinking about a thousand different things. So that's the rest phase. And then the final phase is called reset. And that, that's where you think about, well, how do I want to show up? What sort of impact do I want to have? How do I want to behave? What do I want to achieve? And what we found is that these three phases of reflect, rest, reset helped people transition, whether it, as I said before, it's a sales situation going from one to the other or whether it's going home or whether it's coming to work in the morning. Like sometimes, yeah, I've got young kids and sometimes that morning is so frustrating. Like you don't want to carry that into work. So yeah, they're the three parts. And for those that, I mean, unlike that CEO, not many people have the ability to go and build (laughs) an extra entrance to their house. Um, And I'll I'll sort of explain to you when I was listening to your presentation um, Mm -hmm. and reading the book, Something that occurred to me is I do this in a way, I just never realized I did it, but being aware has made me become more effective at it. So for me, my third space has always been when I got home from work or from meetings, I wouldn't leave my car until I've replied to every message and called every person back that I need to. So that when I walk through the house, I literally don't even need to look at my phone for hours and I could actually be there with the family instead of thinking, oh man, I've got that email I need to do, or I need to still do this before midnight or, or whatever it may be. Apart from you know that example, what are some ways that you'd recommend people implement this third space if um, or, or some practical examples, I should say? Yeah, look, it's a very pliable model. And some people do it really like strategically and and detailed. Other people, yeah, you know, I was talking to an executive who said, yeah, you know, I saw you present and similar to you, he said, I used to come in the he has a global role. So he used to come in the door on the phone and the kids are trying to hug him and get his attention and he's pushing them away. And his wife's saying, you know, spend some time with your children. He's saying, I'm talking to the US, be quiet. And he said, then disastrous evening. And he said, after your presentation, all I did was I just finished the phone call in the car. And he said, and then I would just take a couple of minutes just to reset myself and calm down and I walk in the door and I'm a different guy. And he said even just that small little thing made a huge impact. So it's very pliable. I mean, I talked to one guy who said I get the bus home from the city. And and he said I get on the bus, an alert comes up in my calendar. It asks me those three questions. I answer them. Then I do a relaxation app on my phone. And as I walk from the bus stop home, I think, well, what sort of dad do I want to be? So it's a very flexible um, model that you can take to suit your life. So like, I mean, particularly since COVID has hit, I've got so many emails about people going, oh, I'm using the third space more than ever because I'm, yeah. I'm effectively living at work. Yeah. And, um, you know, what the research shows, uh, our research as well as others, is that when we start to work from home, we tend to do more hours and we find it hard to turn off. So what a lot of people have said is, well, my third space has changed because I don't have a commute anymore. I have to, I've had to manufacture it. And whether it's I go for a walk at the end of the day, whether it's um, you know I, I go to the gym or whether it's I do some relaxation or you know do something social, it, they say it allows me to transition and switch off from work into home mode. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a free 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au. And what if someone's still struggling? If they, they're trying everything they possibly can and it's just literally not working, um, what would you say would be their first point of contact, I guess? or I guess, And I, I know this isn't an easy answer to question because everyone's situation is different and people's lives are complex, but yeah. if it's literally just not working over and over again, 
uh, what type of person should they consult or what type of resources should they sort of go to if they've already read your book and they're still struggling with this idea? Yeah, that's a really hard question to answer just because it is, it's contextually driven. Yep. Here's how I would answer that. I mean... Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you with something so cool. <laughs> no, no, it's an important question. Part of it is just keep playing around till you find something. And, and yep. just think about the basic principle, which is how do I reset myself for the next environment and to focus on it? And even that, even if you ask yourself that question of how am I showing up right now? Like mm. how, what sort of impact do I want to have? That's going to make an impact. And what, one of the biggest things is that in this instant society, people try something once or twice, and if it doesn't go perfectly, they abandon it. One of the mm. things we know about the third space is that the more we practice it, the better we get at it. And our data shows that, you know, we, we had a huge group of business people practice this. We measured mood in the home. So they did it for a month and mood in the home improved by 43%. Like wow. massive change in how happy their home environment was. We're also showing it increases boundary strength by 91%, which is the ability to have a bad day and not take that home with you. Yes. So here's my advice. Actually, so it might be a bit controversial here. Here's what's frustrating me as a as a presenter is yeah. people's inability to think and take a concept and apply it to their world. And it's almost that what I'm seeing in presentations, unless you give someone an exact example that suits their exact world, they dismiss it or they can't go, well, I understand the basic principle. Here's how I apply to me. And I was doing a virtual the other day and and I talked about um, you know, this concept and, and an executive in the room, she said, I saw you present this a year ago. I live near the beach and all I do is just I come home, put on the sand shoes, I go for a walk along the beach and then I come back in the house. Yeah. And someone in the chat went, well, I don't live near the beach so I can't apply the third space. And I just went, are you serious? Like, that's what you take away? So part of my frustration is just understand the principle and then apply it to your world and your context. Like I can't give you, like on this podcast, I can't give every single answer no. about how every person can apply it. But just use like. Like don't, don't expect then, it to pop up. Yeah, play around with a few different yep. things. Like mine, of course, of COVID, I, I mean, I used to fly so much. So my most regular third space was coming home from the airport. And now what I do is like at the end of a work day, I'll grab the dog, we'll go for a walk down the dog park, I take the kids. You know, the other day my th third space was um, my daughter started T-ball. So we, I got home from work and I said, Lex, we're going out in the backyard and we're going to like throw the ball and practice, you know, um, catching it in the mitt. And like we just had the most fun time. But that was my transition into home mode but so it's just taking this concept and then going well here's how I could apply it and even with couples like you know if you're listening to this talk to your partner about well how could we apply this and, and you know I've had some partners go come home and talk about it and and say hey I walk in the door and the first thing you say is how's your day and I've already left the day behind but when you say how's your day I start to relive work and I feel like I'm back there and I get stressed about things. So what they talked about was, well, how do we effectively use this, but I still understand what's happening in your world. And what they, what they came to was that they'd call each other on the commute home and just talk for 10 minutes about what was their day like. But as soon as they walk through the door, it's like we're husband and wife now. We don't talk about work anymore. Yes. But you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's going, it requires someone to have that capacity to like take the principle and then go, well, here's how it's going to suit me best. I guess it's it's in a way, it's like applying the third space to the third space. Because if, if you try it and it doesn't work, it's you just go back and reflect, rest, figure out why that third space didn't work and yeah. then try it again. Yeah. So, so yeah, that makes a lot right. of sense. <laughs> and, and also I think it's... um. And again, like I think reading books like this, talking, listening to episodes like this, 
it gets people thinking because they sort of, like me, I was always doing it, but I wasn't aware. But being aware now, I sort of know when I've done it wrong or when I've done it right. Because I guess you can also, again, like as I said before, sometimes someone can just be in a crappy mood and have no idea why they're in a crappy mood. Yeah. Um, yet subcon- yeah. Because subconsciously they're still thinking about something that happened three days ago or three hours ago. Yeah, no, I've, I've even um, at, a, at a conference, a guy came up to me and he was really emotional after the presentation and he went, man, like that really challenged me. And I sat in that audience and thought I've shown up as a jerk for 15 years. Like I walked through that door and I take my day out on my family. And and he said, just hearing it and realizing the impact that I'm having, like it, even that starts to make an impact. Yeah. And I think honestly, like negative spill, We've been married for nine years. We just had our anniversary last week. Congratulations. I think. Thank you. Thank you. And um, being married for nine years, if there's anything I can learn, personally at least, it's that negative spill that's probably the most toxic part yeah. of a relationship, like the, the most toxic element that can be in a relationship because, again, it just carries over from one to the other. And mm. that example you gave of walking through the front door, especially if one person's been with the kids all day and someone's been working and – yeah, like if it's like two minds or two worlds just clashing sometimes. Yeah. And then ego gets in the way and then arguments escalate and then, yeah, it's it's massive. Like, as I said, I, I really do hope a lot of people will apply this to their lives. And it's because I know you've studied happiness as well. Um, that, that's been a big part of your of your studies as well in the mm. past. And I guess a lot of this is intertwined in a way as well. Yeah, and probably the most common thing I hear is after people watch that presentation, they come up to me and go, what I realize is work gets the best of me. Like yeah. that gets, that's when I'm at my freshest and, and you know, when I'm at my best and, and my family gets whatever's left over and it's usually a bad version. So work gets the best of me. My family get the worst of me. And what this concept's about is how do I stop doing that or how do I reduce that? And, you know, I I get to work with some really senior people, like, you know, executives of companies. I did a roadshow around Asia, obviously pre-COVID, and uh, with the heads of the second biggest bank in the world. So they're they're super influential, you know, people. Yep, yep. And each of them, (laughs) and it was usually after a couple of glasses of red, each of them pulled me aside and went, man, I'd give anything to have heard that presentation 20 years ago because, you know, I'm glad I worked hard and I'm glad I achieved, but I just wish I'd come home a better version. Like I just, I didn't have to take it out on my family. I could have, I could have come home and be more present or be more compassionate and thoughtful. So yeah, that's, that's this, this thing really resonates with people. Yep. And, and, and I mean, one last point I want to, sort of drop and I, I don't want this to we could talk about this for hours but the whole work-life balance thing like when I talk to my clients a lot of people most people if not nearly everyone not many people want to be filthy rich if any that I've ever met yeah. but people just want to be comfortable and they want to be able to spend time with their family and be happy and have that balance and I think when people realize that they can sort of they don't have to work like crazy and lose 20 years of their life to eventually have that work-life balance and hopefully be happy. They could sort of do it now. They could sort of, if they manage time properly, if they have this third space, if they are aware of everything that's happening around them, they can sort of enjoy life now while still working, while still spending time with the family um, and not look back in 20 years and think, man, I should really wish I did things differently, you know, or I, I really wish, yeah, I didn't take that job or whatever, you know. So, so it's, um, yeah, yeah, it's I, funny I, you mentioned. I that. totally get your point, and 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 I think it's a really accurate one. And one of the problems is, I think we we're very black and white. We either go, I can, I have to work hard and work crazy to be successful, or I'm not going to be successful. Yep. And and the key focus of our research has really been how do we perform at a high level without the collateral damage that normally comes with it? Because most of the high performers I've worked with have in other areas of their life are a disaster. And wow. one of the greatest things about the third space is, yeah, you should work hard. Yeah, you should strive. Yes, you should push yourself. But that ability to shift gears where like that CEO that I met with, like that guy, 
during the day was a weapon. Like he was an amazing business person. But then he had this capacity to shift gears and be this playful, fun, compassionate, really, you know, present, kind father. And it's really about choosing your behavior and using this transition to do that is that, yep, during the day I'm going to work hard and sometimes I have to do a conference call at night or sometimes I have to do work of a night time. But when I'm when I'm with those people that mean so much to me, I'm, I'm going to be a great version and I'm, I'm really going to have a positive impact. So that... So it's not that the third space means you can't work hard and you can't achieve. It's it's that ability to shift gears so that you get the most out of all parts of your life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Powerful words. And honestly, it's um, I would encourage anyone listening to this that hasn't read the book to to please read it because it's the best thing to do would be to, to gift it to a friend or family member, even you know that um, probably may need the help or probably may not. They'll get something out of it anyway. Um, but, um, thank you so much for your time, doctor. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, uh, one last thing is with all my episodes, I finish off with a dad joke. Um, <laughs> you have to do it. Um, what's Forrest Gump's password on his computer? I pride myself on dad joke. <laughs> one forest one. Oh my God. That yeah. is, that's, that's even more terrible than most of mine. Yeah, I know. Have you got any you want to share or maybe another day? Oh, I mean, my favorite one is what's brown and sticky. What? A stick. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I can't use that one anymore. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, um, um, that, that slays it with my kids. They love that one. They made a house. That is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it heaps. My pleasure. Thanks for joining us on Sharing More Than The Sheets. Please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.